Now let's talk about electrons grouping around a nucleus. So they have to occupy many of the orbitals. And we've already seen when they do that, they occupy the orbitals in regular ways. There's rules that say no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. At least one must be different for each electron. And we've seen they always go in spin parallel to degenerate orbitals. But another effect occurs, and that is low energy electrons will shield the higher energy electrons. In fact, the three body problem, that is one nucleus that's positively charged, and two electrons, both negatively charged, around a nucleus is a mathematically incredibly difficult problem to solve. You can't solve it exactly like you can the two-body problem, one nucleus and one electron. So what we do is we take the one nucleus, one electron problem, and we say, let that one electron define all the orbitals. And then when we start putting more electrons in, they'll serve as just a slight perturbation to that one electron system. It's easier than solving all the mathematics over again. So let's look at the various energy levels and how an electron already existing might perturb the energy levels of a higher energy electron. So 1s electrons. Now, s electrons are very good shielders. That is, they can shield some of the nuclear charge from outer electrons. So here's a big nuclear positive charge. An s electron has no node at the nucleus. That is, the orbitals are aligned such that the electron has access to the nucleus. If you're a p electron or a d electron, if L is 1 or 2, then you have an angular node at the nucleus. You're forbidden mathematically to exist at the nucleus. So s electrons, by nature, are very good shielders of outer p electrons because they have access to the nucleus where the p electrons don't. So even within the same principal quantum level, if you have n equal 2, you have both 2s and 2p electrons. The 2s electron will be an effective shielder of the 2p. Now what do we mean by shielding? Shielding means I remove some of the effective nuclear charge. So rather than this electron here seeing, say, a full plus 2, if this were a helium nucleus, for instance, rather than seeing a full plus 2, the inner electron shields some of that. And it'll see more like maybe just a plus 1-ish effective nuclear charge. So if it sees a lower nuclear charge, it's easier to ionize. Its energy state is raised. It's closer to that zero ionized state. Let's look at that in more detail. Here I've plotted the 1s 2s, 3s, 4s energy levels, L equals 0. Very good shielding electrons because L equals 0 means s, no node at the nucleus. If you look at how they affect the p orbitals, those that have L equal 1, they're shielding them. The, these levels are raised slightly because of the shielding effect of the s electrons. And that effect continues if you look at L equal 2, the d orbitals are shielded by the internal s and p orbitals below them. So they go to higher energy. And the effect is pretty dramatic. When you get a lot of s and p orbitals, this d, for instance, the first d that you encounter, 3d actually becomes higher energy, easier to ionize than the 4s in many electronic configurations. So it's a significant effect, this shielding effect. s electrons that have this inner state don't shield each other very well. All s electrons have equal access to the nucleus. It's no, no node, so two electrons that have equal access to the nucleus pretty much always see the full nuclear charge, and they don't shield each other very well. But s electrons are great shielders of p and d electrons. So you get 2p energies that are higher than 2s, and you get d energies that are even higher than 4s. So let's look at ionization energies more carefully and see if we can understand this phenomenon. 